Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Mark Proctor. I'm the Drools project lead, and I'm here today to talk about uh, Drools 5 and what's new in Drools 5. Uh, one of the big things we've done in Drools 5 is we've moved from uh, rule oriented uh, methodology to work towards uh, processes, rules, and event processing, and not making you work one way or another way, but allow you to work across an, uh, a range across that full spectrum. So not dictating one methodology on you, but uh, you can work the way you want. This is what we call declarative behavioral modeling, and that's the way we're trying to go in the future. So, Drew's homepage. We had a boot camp last year, we've got one going on now. We've got a blog, blog.athico.com, where you can get all the latest news. So, what's new? I'm a Drills expert. We have a new uh, Ruti algorithm that's more robust. The basics to this is before you used to have shadow facts, and they had problems when working with nested objects. Those problems are now gone. So, it's just a more robust algorithm. We've got type declarations, so when you're declaring your rules, you can now have internal types which are not um, on the class path. So this allows you to have different engines or different versions of your types. And just rules now have metadata, which can be quite useful for, um, uh, you can have a uh, rule uh, is uh, valid, and the metadata can be used to choose whether the rule is valid. Metadata can also drive rule inheritance. So one rule can now extend another rule, and that can be based on categories defined in the metadata. Uh, we've got a new marshalling algorithm, uh, which is, uh, reach is a big tree structure. General serialization doesn't work well with that. So we built a custom uh, marshalling algorithm for that, which just allows you to, to basically pause your running session and save it, move it to another JVM, start it back up again, or just persist it in the database in a much more efficient manner. We're now transactional using a JPA persistence. That work was done as an extension of the marshalling and is necessary for the, the, the flow work that we do to give us transactions and give us uh, persistence. And we've got what we call the new command executor and pipeline. The command executor is allowing you to script your engine. And that's used in com combination with the pipeline to set up the services. So this is all about working with rules as a service, working with it remotely. And it's got a little bit of innovation in there to allow you to execute commands and control what comes back out, which is often a problem when you just use standard remote and technologies that just always return objects. So it gives you more control about what's returned. I'm just going to go over a little bit just to try and explain something that's needed for the event process and the fusion side. So in Drawls, you have a pattern, which is a filter. And the filter comes from the engine. It's the data you put into it. But sometimes not everything lives in the engine. So we use this from keyword to say pet is from an expression. And so this allows you to, to iterate over a, a nested uh, expression. But you can also use what we call a global variable. And we can uh, iterate over the results returned from the global variable. That global variable can be a hibernate session. So it means you've got your zip code in your engine, but you can't put all 60 billion people in your engine. So this allows you to use a hibernate query to return just the people needed for the data that's in your engine. And it gets really cool because we can combine this with the accumulate keyword, which is an aggregations. And we allow uh, our patterns, everything to be nested and chained. So this is saying for the zip code that's in the memory, find me all my red buses and uh, calculate the total from the red buses. And this is needed for Drools Fusion. So Drools Fusion is about event processing. Events are typically streams, JMS. Uh, they're continually coming into your engine. And we had to rethink about how a rule engine works so they could be extended to do event management. So the first thing we realized was that a rule engine is a single point of entry. So that's like a, a, a bottleneck. So we extended it. And also as well, all rules can see all data. So we extended it to have these entry points. These are basically a partition. It's allow you to get a parallel throughput of all your different streams. So each entry point is normally hooked up to a stream. And your by order events, uh, you can get particular patterns and hook them directly up to an entry point. So the rest of the network doesn't see them. They go directly through to that filter. And of course, we allow joins across the relevant streams in the working memory. We have the new type declarations by marking something of a, of a class, say on your class path, as an event. That means we automatically retract it for you. So we now manage your facts. You can just keep stuffing them in there forever. You don't have to worry about retracting them. Or you can declare the fields, and it would then generate it as a POJO local to the class path, local to that, sorry, local to the class loader, which means you can have different engines in the same JVM with different versions of a, a class. Using the pipeline, you can actually use Jaxby, Xtreme, Smooks to data load onto those. 
and um, as a service as well. We support the 13 temporal operators, allowing you to do a full range of temporal comparisons. So you can say, I've got a by order event, uh, and it must happen within one second and 10 seconds. Uh, so the by acknowledgement event must happen between one and 10 seconds after the by order event. But actually knowing when something happens isn't that useful. What is more useful is knowing when something doesn't happen. I want to know when my by acknowledgement event does not happen within uh, one and 10 seconds of my by order event. And that's not trivial. Imagine trying to write the Java code for that. So this gets extended further. So it's fine, we've got temporal comparators between our events, but I want to know about events over a period of time. So we extended our patterns, what we call behaviors. Using this over behavior, we can look at a, a stream of events over a period of time or a count. So this is uh, over five seconds or a, or a count of a thousand. And then we can combine that with the accumulate you saw earlier. And I can say when I have the red hat stocket symbol over a period of five seconds, when it has an average of more than 100. The important thing here is this is a sliding time window, not a batch or, uh, or a tumbling time window. So this is constantly monitoring for that one period of five seconds where it's more than 100. And you can actually combine your patterns. So not only do they come from an entry point, uh, they can also then look at the uh, time window over that entry point. So finally, we've got Drill's Flow. So this is a BPL hell because you have to model everything explicitly in a BPL. With rules, we've taken a different approach. And by using your rules and uh, using your processes, uh, you can start to get a much uh, richer environment, something that's not quite so rigid. And you can have your rules monitor the data that's in your processes, and the rules can start to make decisions. And that's, um, anyway, so typically the way a rules session works with a process is what we call a station stateless decision service. So the process calls out to the rule engine, which then returns the results. It goes on to the next stage. The process calls out to the rule engine, gets the results, and the rule engine is only stateless. That's quite primitive. And if you have to do this a lot, you end up with this, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So one of the, and this is how this looks. It goes into the process engine, process engine goes out to the rule engine, goes back to the process engine and continues. And this is very poor integration. This is typically what you get from most vendors with rules and process integration. With Drool's flow, we actually are continually monitor the rule engine and the process engine, and the rules can actually intercept the processes. And, and imagine you have a trading system, and you don't want to model every single stage, stock market's crashing, log where you are and exit out, because otherwise you can end up with a lot of repeated definitions. So what you can do is you can define one rule that says when this happens, 